Well, folks, it's a great day to cook a brisket. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We got the barrel set up. We got some western oak and some western apple down there with a little lump charcoal. And we've got our uh, charcoal basket ready to go. Uh, getting ready to get ready to go, rather. And so you guys hang tight. It's going to be some barrel brisket today, baby, with a TK cooker. Absolutely. is a 14 and a half pound uh, black Angus brisket. I got it from Sam's Club. Need to do a little trimming on it. As you can see, it still has the uh, abrasions on the side from where they scald the meat. So uh, I'm gonna take this down. I'm gonna put it in fast speed so we don't have to sit here and bore you with the cutting of fat. So stay tuned. We got barrel brisket going on today. And I'm gonna be cooking it with my gourmet grilling dust and my our grill party dust combination, so y'all stay tuned. All right, as you can see, my brisket trim, this is not a brisket for competition. It's just going on the barrel. We're just trying to eat. So I'm not trying to make it look fancy. As you can see, I left a lot of silver skin right in here. The technique I used for my brisket, that silver skin ain't got a chance in hell to make it and to, to stop anything uh, in my cooking process. So y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna clean up my area a little bit and we'll be back to seasoning. All right, thanks for hanging in there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the seasoning start, process started. And as I mentioned before, my seasoning process is gonna be pretty simple. I'm using a combination of yellow mustard as the binder, my grilling dust and my R grill party dust together, 50-50 uh, split. And that's what I have right here in this shaker. So, we're gonna go ahead and start with the back. There's 101 ways to do a brisket. There's 101 million ways uh, to do a brisket on YouTube. Everybody's got a brisket video on YouTube. I actually don't have that many on my site, which is kind of confusing because in competitions, brisket is actually probably been one of my best if not the my best uh category so i'm kind of shocked that i don't have a lot more videos but you know i've been one i've been one man camera shooting this stuff so you know with a brisket man you really need two hands so good thing i got a tripod now but anyway uh, fat i took it down a little bit as you can see not much i'm not really worried about it i'm cooking on a barrel so my heat's coming from the bottom so i really uh, need a lot of fat on there to help protect it but we're just going to go ahead and get it seasoned. And I like a heavy coat on both sides. I'm a both sides season type of person. And I'm going heavy. I'm going heavy. Yeah, you want to taste the beef, but, you know, I want I want my beef to be seasoned. And I'm going to pat it in. You know, a lot of, I know a lot of videos, and I've even got a few. In competitions, I don't pat. In competitions, I let it rest. I let the sugars and salts go in and draw out the moisture. But this ain't competition. This is home. So at home, I don't care. Same deal. A little bit of mustard. You can use olive oil. You can use canola oil. I wouldn't use butter because butter will really brown it up. Um, probably more than you want. Um, but anything that's going to help it stick. Worcestershire is another good one. I love Worcestershire. I just don't happen to have any. Seems like every time y'all watch my videos, there's always something I'm missing. It's because I do a lot of cooking. All right, so I'm going to go heavy coat. And again, remember, all the silver skin, we ain't worried about that. And you'll see in a minute why I say that. So, got a little brown. Got a little, oh, I guess I didn't, guess I didn't trim too well over on this side. I'll all get right, that. So, I had to do a little more trimming. So let's go on the side. We're going to go on the side pretty heavy as well. And as always in the front, you're going to go a little heavy as well. And again, I'm going to put a nice coat of rub on this brisket. I'm going to pat it in. And then I'm going to allow the front side to sit and rest. I'm still going to pat it, but I'm going to allow it to rest. And uh, once it finished resting, it's going to start sweating. 
the moisture is going to start coming up and then we'll go into step three y'all stay tuned all right we've got the brisket right here it, i don't know if you can see on the camera but the brisket has sweated out you can see the uh salts and sugars and the rubs have started to bring out a lot of the uh the moisture so this is when step three for me goes into play and i even do this with my competition briskets that silver skin we got some for it what i'm gonna use this for this jacquard is to punch the flavor down into the meat not to tenderize the brisket but to punch the the main premise of it is to punch the 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 seasonings down into the meat you don't want to do it when the brisket is dry because all you'll end up doing is caking your seasonings on here wait till it draws out the moisture because what it's going to do anyway is suck it back in suck the, the moisture and the seasoning back in but you're going to push it back in and give it a little head start And that's it that's all i'm looking for i don't do the point i mean the point to me in itself has enough flavor so then i'll come back over like this we're gonna come back over with a little more seasoning it's gonna sweat that out and that's it it's going on the pit y'all stay tuned all right lit charcoals are ready just gonna dump them on there put the lid on and we'll be right back all right as you can see i've got a water pan in there i've got it lengthwise i got it kind of crushed in there a little bit um, but i'm gonna have my brisket going the same way so that all the fat and the drippings can kind of fall in the pan and not in the cooker but i've got some water in there to help me regulate this temperature so the lid's going on we're gonna let it come up to temp we'll be right back stay tuned all right at about yeah what's that about 260 Ready to go. I got my water pan in. And everything is looking real nice inside, so I'm going in. We're going in with the brisket. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line it up with the pan as best I can. And that's it. Push those seasons down in there just a little bit more. If I got any crevices. That's it. We're ready to go, baby. Y'all stay tuned. Barrel brisket right here on the TK Cook. About an hour and a half in. We're running at about probably 275. Let's take a look at it. Looking good. Got a little steam coming up. Messing up my camera, but she's a little wet up top. That's great. A water pan. I just put some more water in there. An hour in, so she's looking good. Brisket's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and get it closed up because, as we all know, with these barrel cookers, the more you leave it open, the more you leave that lid open, the hotter it gets. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. We're about three hours in. I'm sorry. Not three hours. We're about four hours in. pretty good spraying it down with a little apple cider vinegar apple juice combination water pan still has some dripping some water in it and it smells amazing so I think it's good We'll check back in on it in another hour. Stay tuned. All right. Hit shot up to 300 on me. I wasn't paying attention, so I got to add a little more water in here. Overall, the brisket looks good, though. Uh, but I'm going to add a little more water. Spritz it with a little apple cider vinegar, apple juice combination. And I think we are well on the way. We are, right now, we are five hours in. I haven't tempted yet, don't really care yet what the temp is like. But she's looking good. Y'all stay tuned. All right, one thing I want to mention, I'm still adding water actually. I, uh, I probably added about, maybe about four cups of water to my pan. 
I just wanted to walk you around it. It's looking good so far. Getting nice bark and crust on the edges, which I'm trying to keep moist. Uh, burn ends is gonna come out real nice. The point down there is looking real good. The color's looking real good also. So, uh, as always, you have a little bit of uh, moisture build up right in this area right here. But she's looking good, so we're only, let me see, I'm only what? Right at six hours? Usually at six hours, I would wrap it, I would temp it and wrap it just because I'm set up to do it like that from competitions, but I'm gonna let it roll. This damper I've got cracked midway, not midway, it's cracked just barely. This one's wide open and my top damper, my top stack is wide open as well. And right now, if I can get this, this tripod down there, I'm sitting right at about, what am I sitting at? Probably about 275, because I just opened it up, so. I'm gonna keep on rolling. My goal is to get the bark a little bit better and uh, get at least about a good seven, eight hours of smoke. At that point, to me, you can wrap. All right, it's time Stay to check it. It's time to, it's been about, it's been in here about seven hours. Now it's time for me to take a temp. And I generally temp like right there in the middle. Feels real good. I'm at 170. I want to say this one is off by about six degrees. So I'm gonna say I'm at 170. So to me, I'm in the stall phase right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. I'm gonna go ahead and get it wrapped. See, I'm at 178, but I think mine is six degrees off. So I'm at like 172. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. So while I have it open, hit it with some more apple juice, apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna get this bad boy wrapped up. Looks good though. Right. Looks really good. Looks really, really, really good. Get a few of these little, little dry areas over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it wrapped up so y'all stay tuned. Brisket wrapping coming up next. Here is a little brisket uh, marinade that I put inside of my wrap. I usually put it right here on the point and just let it drizzle down. Okay. Wrap it up real tight. Stay All right, we are going into our, I want to say hour eight of this cook. It's wrapped up, but I just want to take a quick temp to see what we're looking at. So if I can get my thermometer co to cooperate, this is my fire. This is right. It feels really good. But let me get right up in there. All right. It's saying 206. I already know this thermometer is about six degrees off, but I'm not gonna go by the temp on this one because usually when I do a competition brisket, I'm gonna take it to about, 20, about 206, 207, take the heat off of it and then let it sit in the cooler and chill out until I'm ready for it. But I'm gonna do this one by feel. To me, it's still got a little ways to go. So I'm gonna come back in about an hour and check it again. Y'all stay tuned. All right, it's time to check it. I think we're right where we need to be. This one's tipping out at, uh, yeah, that's wrong. All right, I think we're right where we need to be. This one's tipping out at about 208. My thermometer is off. I probed it a few times in different spots and it feels really good, so we're gonna take it off. So we're gonna let it rest. And we'll come back and we'll slice it up after the rest for about an hour. Y'all stay tuned. I don't know if you can get a close up on it. We'll get a close up on it when we start cutting it. But she has rested for one and a half hours. 
she looks beautiful. So let's get cutting, man. I've been waiting on this for a minute. You know, before you have a, before you, when you're cooking barbecue, you gotta have a beer. Let me take a few sips of this. But let's get cutting. Oh, let's see if we can get some wiggle out of this thing. Oh yeah, she's got a nice wiggle. She's beautiful. This is what I'm gonna do. All right, let's get, let's get going. I love the point. This is probably my favorite part of the brisket right here. The flat, cool, it's good, but to me, all the money and all the flavor is in this point. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it right here. Where the point and the flat kind of meet on the backside. Let's see what we got here. As you can see, we still got some flat, I mean some point uh, on the bottom right here along with the flat. Not much, just a little bit. This is where you get those beautiful burn ends if you were doing competition barbecue. But to me, this is where the money is right here. So I'm gonna cut this down the middle. As you can see, it's got a nice little smoke ring. Like I say, I like the point. So let me go ahead and give me a few slices off the point. Oh, yes, sir. Let me do one more. Look at that. Beautiful. I don't know if the camera can see it. Look at that beautiful slice, man. And as always, you know, the pull test, it comes right apart. But man, this is some beautiful brisket. Look at that. On the drum. This is drum barrel. This is drum brisket. Beautiful little bark on there. Beautiful little bark. And in a competition, these would be your burn ends, but, but we would have did a different treatment on the burn ends prior to cooking it. But this is some beautiful eating right here, man. Look at there. Look at there. So let me finish cutting this up and then we're gonna eat it up and I'm gonna tell you just what I think. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you for joining me today. We did some barrel brisket today on this TK cooker. Let me tell you something. It wasn't a prime brisket. It wasn't a Wagyu brisket. It was just a regular old Black Angus brisket for Sam. But let me tell you, it came out phenomenal. And as you can see, that's some damn good brisket right there. That's the point. To me, that's the money. This is the best part of the brisket to me, man. So, as always, when we eat it, we gotta try it. It's money. I mean, money. That bark. The smoke ring, the fat layer, is money. So, again, brand new cooker. First time cooking a brisket on a barrel. I want you guys to experience with me. So, as always, good food, good vibes, and always good people. Thank y'all for joining us. Catch you in the next one.